I, I really enjoy, I really enjoyed it. Um, I know some people really didn't enjoy it. They liked like Kittle and some of the other books, but for me, this book was very, very good, and I, I really did enjoy it for graduate school. I don't think I've done this yet, but I have a little a bookshelf right here. It sits on my desk. It's just not really a bookshelf. It's just part of the desk. Now, <clears throat> there's a difference between a book that graduates to this part of my desk and a book that is like over on that shelf or that shelf or up in those rafters up there. <clears throat> and that is how often I use it. I use these books all the time, like all the time. And there's one over there that I use a lot too. Um, but I probably, I don't know if I'll get it or not. So let's just talk about these books that are on my desk and why I use them and why I like them. My first book <clears throat> is Classical Mechanics by Taylor. This is an absolute classic. I love this book. This book is um, fantastic for everything you want to know about Lagrangian and Hamiltonian formalisms. Firstly, um, and well, even there's so much more that it has, but I namely use it for the classical Things field theory. B. Cheezer, thank you for the follow. Welcome in, welcome in. Looks scary, it's awesome, it's a fantastic book. If you want to learn Lagrangian mechanics, now I have a YouTube series on Lagrangian mechanics. If you want to learn Lagrangian mechanics, this is 100% a great book to learn it from. Also, classical field theory, very, very strong in this book. Um, I absolutely love that book. Central Force chapter is pretty cool. <clears throat> All the planet stuff is pretty cool in it too. Um, I don't know too much about the Central Force chapter. But the Hamiltonian mechanics is fantastic as well. And you can learn all sorts of stuff. Like I always, if there's a problem and it has anything to do with classical mechanics, I immediately go to that book. Fantastic book. Next up, Hartle. Now I, I'll tell you why. <clears throat> I'll tell you why James B. Hartle's gravitation book makes it in here. Because I don't know GR. <laughs> Straight up. I don't know GR. I don't have time to learn it. But it still comes up. And the idea behind having this um, would be because it answers questions like really nicely uh, without going very heavily involved in the math. I do have on this shelf Sean Carroll's gravitation book. Now that one, if I want to learn something very rigorously, I will spend the time and work through Sean Carroll's book. But usually it's like, hey, I need to know this. I forgot what it is. I don't know what, you know, the short child metric is, or I don't know, you know, what the Ricci curvature tensor means. Like I'm telling you, I don't know what that means. <laughs> so I learned it at one point. I don't remember. I know where it is in Hartle. I can find it. I can refresh my memory and then move on. Okay, let's go to the other side of the books. Townsend. Now, Townsend was the book that I learned quantum mechanics from. I don't know if it's better than any other quantum mechanics books. I have another quantum mechanics book that I'm going to get to that I like more. But yeah, so, so, so Townsend, I learned my undergraduate quantum mechanics from, and it's concrete, it's solid. You start with the uh, Stern Gerlach, you work through all of the, uh, you know, the various parts of the spin momentum uh or momentum i mean uh total angular momentum from the spin angular and the orbital ma angular momentum all the different parts you start working through hydrogen and then you see helium uh and you do all and then you learn perturbation theory it's a great book and it covers all the basis everything's very straightforward and it's wonderful for like working through exercises and just getting uh <clears throat> it's all torture no it's not it's fantastic um, I do like Townsend a lot though. And that's my go-to book for like, again, if I have a quick question, if I have something I want to learn, um, but don't have a lot of time to spend on it, that's the book that I want to go to. But anyways, that's the, uh, QM, uh, introductory QM book. Kind of like my, my go-to. This one might be my favorite QM book. Sakurai is so good. And like, after you work through it for a while, I just feel like you start to realize how strong some of the things are are in quantum mechanics that you have to learn and how like fascinating and and uh well-founded they are like he does such a good job explaining everything so clearly and thoroughly um it requires a bit of rigorous like learning to get to that level um i did this in graduate school i took i used this book for graduate school um and i really enjoyed it in graduate school was when i started to really learn 
how to like utilize textbooks beneficially, like really beneficially. And uh, yeah, 70%. Yeah, I love this book. This book is fantastic. It's really, really well done. And Sakurai, I have a video on Sakurai his, um, and this book sp specifically. Uh, so if you'd like to um, check that out on YouTube, if you are new to my channel, uh, yeah, there's a video where I kind of talk about him and his life, his legacy, and what happened specifically with this book, which a lot of people don't know about. When I was an undergraduate, someone told me that this was the theoretical physicist Bible. I don't know if that's true or not. But this book is really nice. Uh, it is, uh, it has like one or two page pages like dedicated to everything, everything you could think about that you would need mathematically in physics is in this book. Now there's a couple things, and I say that I guess I should say that a little bit lighter. I'm sure there's string theory stuff and things like that that are much more advanced that won't be in here. But I mean, like for the every physicist, every physicist need. That's not like a mathematician at heart <laughs> um, is in this book. So it's really, really good. They only spend like a page or two on everything or even less. Like some things they only have like a small section on, but like residue theory, Wick's theorem. Uh, I know those are related, um, but like everything like Gaussian integrals, Fourier transforms, everything is in this book. So if there's ever a thing where you're just like, I don't, I don't feel very confident about Fourier transforms or, you know, about sums that I need for, uh, you know, path integration or something like that. This would be a great book. This is a great book for that. Now, there's a caveat with that. That is, the formalisms are weird. Sometimes the notation does not match common notation that we use in physics. I have noticed that. It's a little bit difficult sometimes to get through the, the math. This is Arfkin and Weber. And Harris, apparently. <laughs> I always just call Arfkin and Weber. Um, I don't know about the Harris part, but yes, Harris is there too. Okay. Next up. I mean, come on, right? This is a good book. Now I was not a huge fan of it in undergraduate, mostly timing wise. Cause I was, I was coming back into school being a 28 year old who only studied math. I had rough time in uh, I had, well, I wouldn't have a rough time. I had a very easy experience with introductory physics, electricity and magnetism. So this book kind of kicked my butt, but look at it now as someone, as a, as a graduate student, this book is phenomenal. Very, very, very good. Jackson is really, really good too. Why am I coughing so much? I just have a head cold. I've had a head cold. My family got a head cold. It's nothing. It's nothing dramatic. It's just a head cold. Um, yeah. So this is a great, great book. Uh, very, very good. Gauss's law, uh, is one of my, is one of my favorite things in physics. I think is one of my favorite things to teach for certain, um, Ampere's law phenomenal as well. Of course, all the Maxwell's equations. And then this book also has a great introduction to special relativity and, uh, the role it plays in e &M. Very, very good. Excellent book. You'll see this one on like your first, like dedicated electricity magnetism class in undergraduate uh, is where you'll see this book. Um, You'll have your introductory physics classes where you'll do introductory kinematics. That's more like the first one where you'll see classical mechanics and then your analytical mechanics course, or some people might say some might call it something differently. That's where you'll see the Taylor classical mechanics is your first dedicated mechanics class. And then after that, you'll have a dedicated e &M class or before I th mine was before it, but that's whatever, whatever it is. <clears throat> Now we're going to get into some more, uh, some more books that are maybe less familiar. Now I used to study dark matter. I studied dark matter for like two years. I studied cosmo cosmology, cosmology a lot. And I am not a, a cosmologist. <laughs> I don't know if I ever was a cosmologist, but this book is fantastic. Again, it's for like, later undergraduates, but it's not, so it's not very, very complicated mathematically, but it's wonderful. It walks you through concepts and, uh, mathematics and, uh, the ex the observations and stuff that, uh, cosmologists use fantastic book for like looking stuff up. Also the first three minutes by Steven Weinberg, another great cosmology book, um, in layman terms, clearly explained. Wonderful. All right. Next is my quantum computing book. 
Uh, like I said, I am a PhD student studying quantum computing. I'm new to it and I'm working through this book. I'm working through this book mostly with you guys on Wednesdays. So if you would like to learn quantum computation, uh, I am doing it on Wednesdays. Uh, we do like a half an hour discussion series uh, style where I go over some of the topics in this book. We skipped last Wednesday, but we're going to be doing it again this Wednesday. Right now, we're kind of talking about the math that you need for quantum computing and quantum mechanics in general. Um, well, I should say it's quantum mechanical. It's quantum mechanics, but like I'm only touching the stuff that we really need for quantum computers. Um, so we won't be talking about like hydrogen atoms and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so this is a great book for learning quantum computation. Michael uh, Nielsen's active on Twitter and a wonderful follow if you haven't followed him. Isaac Chuang, I don't know too much about, but I do know that he was in the first uh, experiments involving quantum computers and has a rich history in quantum computing. Um, so you should go, you know, they're both fantastic physicists uh, and this book is really, really well written. So I'm really enjoying it. If you're not into computer science, it can be a little bit challenging to get through some of the sections, but like myself, I'm not in computer science. So it was a little bit challenging to get through some of the sections, but nevertheless, fantastic book. Highly recommend. Next up we have quantum field theory and condensed matter. Now, you know that I'm a quantum field theorist. I work on quantum information and the way that I am understanding it relativistically is through quantum field theory. So uh, in condensed matter specifically, uh, oh, ooh, boo. so the fields of quantum co of, of quantum field theory and condensed matter are very rich. Um, I will put a picture of it on discord Welcome after, uh, Ash, um, Nasta, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so this is a great book for someone who doesn't know a lot of condensed matter and knows some field theory, um, which is exactly where I'm at. I know some field theory. I didn't know a lot of condensed matter. I still don't know a lot of condensed matter, but I'm learning it for the sake of the quantum computer. Uh, and this book is fantastic because it's kind of like the, uh, I mean, Shankar was a condensed, uh, quantum field theorist. Dudek, thank you also for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Um, and this book is like the bridging the gap for someone who's a field theorist to kind of like learn all of the things you need to know to speak like condensed matter. Um, I believe Shankar used to be a particle physicist and then moved into condensed matter like many people have, um, including my advisor, uh, who did the same thing, got a PhD in particle physics, then moved into condensed matter. Um, and I am doing that now kind of haphazardly but this book is fantastic for that and it's helped me a lot i've learned about renormalization i've learned about different practices of 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 doing qft on a lattice and things like that so this is highly helpful um we only have a couple more i'll do a twofer these are my two main quantum field theory books i have shrednicki quantum field theory and then schwartz quantum field theory schwartz is more rigorous than shrednicki shrednicki is easier to read smaller chapters and i can bust through topics very quickly on it so it's like i don't have a ton of time surprise uh, so i love to just work through shrednicki topics if i want to learn something or need to know something and then if i like need to dig in deeper with it like symmetries was one thing that i didn't get enough out of shrednicki so i went to schwartz and schwartz has some excellent excellent details on symmetries and the good things about them in quantum field theory and how you can utilize them those two books are kind of like working your way up to Pes peskin and schroeder level peskin and schroeder level i kind of just use the index uh indices in the back i don't or the appendices whatever they're called i don't, I don't know what they're called for like the Feynman rules um, because they're clean and easy to find and nice. Um, and they have some nice integrals in the back that come in handy too. But I don't really use the book. I did it for Wick Rotation too, just to sort of test my knowledge. Um, next up is the Standard Model and Beyond. You guys know I love this book. Paul Langacker, fantastic book. Uh, it is the, um, it has everything you want to know about things that are not in your typical quantum field theory book, like neutrinos, uh, SUSY, lots of good, good, good content on symmetries, which are in quantum field theory books, but it's condensed and it's nice and it's easy to read. Lots of very, very good information in this book. I highly recommend it. Yeah, the second chapter in this is clutch for, uh, for someone who wants to learn about things beyond the quantum field theory, but doesn't know enough, doesn't remember enough quantum field theory. You can just read the second chapter in this book and it will remind a lot of them. Oh, we have two more books to get through. Let's do these last two books and then we'll chat a little more. So I have two, this book I really like. Uh, again, I need a lot of learning for solid state physics. When I was an undergraduate, I worked, worked on phonon vibrations. 
That's what I was learning as an undergraduate. So Phonon Vibrations, this book is absolutely clutch. <laughs> oh no, it's key. How's that? We'll edit that out. It's key to uh, learning these very difficult uh, uh, concepts, brav brave lattices, uh, reciprocal space, all of that very important stuff. Well explained in Ashcroft and Merman. Very, very good book for learning those uh, kind of condensed matter, solid state uh, t type of topics. This has a beautiful guide to bravis, brave lattices right in the beginning of the book. Very, very good. Okay, so uh, Statistical Mechanics, last book, Statistical Mechanics by Pathria and Beale. Um, I mean, any type of canonical ensemble you're interested in. Very good. The Maxwell Relations right in the beginning. Uh, this book is just fantastic. Uh, and it's absolutely uh, key... <laughs> I gotta get better synonyms. <laughs> this book was fantastic. I learned statistical mechanics in graduate school Welcome using uh, this book, and uh, I use it constantly whenever I need to look up partition functions or any of the statistics involved in like uh, many body physics things like that. This book is a great job talking about that partition function wise, and uh, I, I really I really enjoyed it. Um, I know some people really didn't enjoy it. They liked like Kittle and some of the other books, but for me, this book was very, very good, and I, I really did enjoy it for graduate school. Um, and that's it. That's what I have on my desk. These are the books that I look to frequently when I have a question, depending on what it is that I'm thinking about or working on. If it's the partition function, it's Pathory and Beale. If it's classical field theory, it's going to be Taylor. If it's, you know, any specific thing of particle physics, I'll start with Shrednicki, move to Schwartz, maybe to Langacker if I need to, things like that. Um, yeah, Pathria. So after this is over, after the stream's over, I will snap a picture of this and put it on the Discord.